Retirement is something you should only need to do once. However, there's a lot that goes into that decision. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you the six things you need to make sure that you're doing before you make the decision to retire. Hey everybody, I'm James Canol, founder of Root Financial, and I'm here to teach you how to get the most out of life with your money. So there's six core things everyone needs to do before they retire. And today I'm gonna to show you what those six things are and make sure you stay tuned to the end because the final one is the one that the fewest amount of people implement and it may be actually one of the most important of them all. So the first thing that you need to do is you need an income strategy. The name of the game in retirement is cash flow. Where's income going to come from? This is relatively easy when you're working. When you're working, you have a salary. And yes, that salary pays for benefits and taxes and other things like that, but you have one consistent income that's coming in and you know probably what it's gonna be exactly each month. But when you retire, you don't have that. And when you retire, it's not enough to say you have enough income for the first year and the second year and the third year. You also need enough income for the 15th year and the 20th year and the 30th year even. Well, to do this, there's really two steps. Number one is understand how much income do you actually need? What are your expenses gonna be? And that's gonna be a reflection of what you want retirement to look like. So travel, basics, et cetera. How do you make sure that you have enough money coming in to live that retirement you want to live? Number two is coming up with a plan for what income sources do you have to meet that? Now these could be fixed income sources like pension or social security, maybe even rental income, or these could be portfolio income sources. So withdrawals from 401k, Roth IRA, brokerage account, et cetera. But what you need to do is you need to understand what are the expenses you need to generate and what income sources are you going to use to create the income to support that over your retirement. So this is where you ask yourself questions like what social security strategy is best for me in terms of when I collect or maybe when my spouse collects? What order will I draw down my accounts in between brokerage account, Roth account, 401k? Maybe even how will my expenses change over retirement? Meaning what will life look like at 65 and what will I be spending then that I won't be spending maybe at 85. So ask yourself these important questions so you can start to create the income strategy that makes most sense for you. And by the way, one of the main questions I get is what do other people actually spend in retirement? Well, it depends. So leave a comment below. How much do you think you're gonna spend? Let's start getting a sense of what other people are gonna do so we have something to compare our numbers to. Now, the second thing you need to do before you retire is you need an investment strategy. Now, the old way of thinking is, okay, I'm retired, therefore I need a 60-40 portfolio, 60% stocks, 40% bonds. This thinking could not be further from the truth. Now, you might end up with a 60-40 portfolio, but don't start there. Your investments and the allocation of your investments should be a reflection of the income that you need to create. And that income that you need to create, you need to make sure that you have part of your portfolio allocated in a stable conservative investment to meet those income needs, regardless of what's happening in the stock market. And you need another portion of your portfolio to ensure you're growing and keeping up with inflation because inflation is one of the biggest risks to your ability to retire. So start with your income sources to then determine how your investment should be allocated. Here's a basic example to show you how two different retirees could have totally different portfolios. Let's assume that one person retires and they and a spouse have excellent social security and pension benefits and they have a portfolio but their social security and pension cover all their basics. So they say, you know what? We don't really need this portfolio forever. We really wanna spend this and live large the first 10 to 15 years on travel, time with family, hobbies that we have. We really wanna spend this when we can most enjoy it. So they might spend that down over the first 10 years, which means they'd probably wanna allocate their investments real conservative. They don't have as long of a time horizon because they need that money now and over the next 10 years. So that might be a very conservative investment account. Now let's compare that to another couple where they say, you know what, we also have social security and pension and that covers all of our needs. And by the way, we live totally comfortable. We're able to travel, do the things we wanna do. We have investments, but you know what, it's more important to us to maybe pass that down to children or grandchildren or charity or whatever it might be. Well, that couple, even though they're also retired, they would want their investments to be allocated much more aggressively because they're not gonna use them for a very long period of time. And in fact, it's what they're gonna to use to pass down to future generations. So two extreme examples, but you can see here where just because you're retired does not necessarily mean you need the same investment allocation. Understand the role your investments need to play in your overall plan, and then use that to back into an investment strategy that's best gonna support your retirement goals. The third thing that you need to have in place is a tax strategy. Taxes could potentially be your single largest expense item in retirement. So what do you do about that? Well, you understand how different tax strategies may impact you. 
Roth conversions, for example, are a big one. And the concept there is do you shift money from pre-tax accounts to Roth accounts in years where your income is much lower to avoid having to pay as high of taxes in the future? That's an excellent strategy for many people, especially at the beginning of retirement. Or maybe it's tax gain harvesting. So the tax code is currently structured such that the first amount of capital gains up to a certain dollar amount are tax-free at the federal level. So are you intentionally realizing enough in gains if you're under that threshold to not have to pay any taxes on that? Versus tax loss harvesting. Are you strategically selling investments when they're down, buying similar investments so you don't lose your market exposure, but then being able to write off those losses on your tax return? Maybe you're charitably inclined. Well, are you implementing a donor advised fund strategy or qualified charitable distributions from your IRAs? All these are different things that say, based upon what you're already planning to do, how do we maximize the tax effectiveness of this? And it's not uncommon for the right strategy to save tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even more, depending upon your situation. So when you start to understand the potential benefit, you can see it'd be crazy not to have a tax strategy going into retirement to at least understand what you should be thinking about to make sure you're making the most of your plan. The fourth thing you need in place is an insurance strategy. Now this is pretty broad. This could cover health insurance if you retire before 65. This could cover Medicare once you're 65 and beyond. This is things like long-term care insurance. Do you need it or do you self-insure? What about life insurance? Do you still need life insurance? Or are you at the point where you're self-insured and if you pass away, your surviving spouse or even children are no longer dependent upon you or at least have sufficient assets to be okay even in the event of your passing? This is things like homeowner's insurance, car insurance, umbrella insurance. All the planning in the world is great, but if you don't have the right protection in place and something happens, a health event, a life event, a liability event, well, that has the impact to completely derail everything else you have going on. So as you're looking at your plan, build your plan first, and then you start to understand what type of health insurance would best protect me? What type of life insurance, long-term care insurance, do I even need it? What level of liability insurance do I need on my auto policies, my home policy, my umbrella policy? Because all those things start to protect this vision you're creating and this plan you're creating to get the most life out of your money, to have a comfortable retirement. The fifth thing you need to have in place before you retire is your estate strategy. So money is very personal. And when you look at money, it should be a reflection of what's most important to you. Now, for a lot of people, what's most important to them is family. And everyone has a different philosophy as to how they want to protect their family or provide for their family. But many people, their finances come into play with that. So is there a specific legacy you want to leave when you pass? Is there a specific amount of legacy you're giving you want to do while you're still living? How will your assets and your income sources be used to reflect your personal goals with regards to family and how you want to support them? So you need to ask yourself before you retire, is your estate plan updated? This involves making sure your estate plan itself is actually updated. When was the last time you updated your trust or your will or your advanced directives? Do you still want those people to be your trustees? Are beneficiary designations within your trust still structured properly? Make sure you take the time to account for that. Then even how do you invest? Do you wanna leave a specific amount to children? Well, if so, shouldn't that amount be invested differently than the amount that you're currently spending today? So how do you incorporate your estate planning intentions within the context of your plan as it stands today? And then the final thing you need to make sure that you have in place, and really this should have been number one, but it's a purpose. What's your purpose for retirement? So often, and I talk about this a lot, people get to retirement and their income's in place and their investment strategies in place and they have the right insurances and state and tax plan and they get to retirement and something's missing. It's not everything they thought it would be. And it's because while they focus so heavily on the investment and the financial side of things, they fail to focus on the personal side of things, the purpose side of things. What do you want to do in retirement? You're creating something from scratch here. You no longer have the obligations of a 40, 50, 60 hour work week. Instead, you get to create your own obligations or black of. So how do you create that structure? How do you create that purpose? How do you create something that you're excited to retire to as opposed to just being excited to retire from your old job? So purpose is something that has nothing to do with your 401k balance or when you collect social security. It has everything to do with what's most important to you. What's your why? What are the things that bring you the most joy and the most out of life? How do you craft a plan to ensure you're getting those things in retirement and then your investments, your income, your taxes, your estate, your insurances, that's all just designed to support this.
So often this is the hardest thing for many retirees to do because as we get older, we tend to try fewer and fewer new experiences. That's just a general law of human nature. So one of the best things you can do here is almost ask yourself the question, what would this look like if I knew I couldn't fail? What would this look like if I could create my dream retirement and knew that that could become a reality? Oftentimes, that means trying new experiences, embracing that beginner's mindset, doing something that's scary up front, but it's gonna lead to a lot more meaning and purpose and contentment throughout your retirement. So those are the six things you need to make sure you're doing before you retire. And what you'll start to find is one of the hidden keys to a successful retirement is a mindset shift. A mindset shift that applies to each of these individual six components. And that mindset shift can actually be one of the hardest things to do. Now there's one specific mindset shift that I believe has the power to transform the entirety of your retirement. I made a video on it that you can check out here of how this mindset shift will allow you to get the most out of your retirement. Once again, I'm James Knoll, founder of Root Financial. And if you're interested in seeing how we help our clients at Root Financial get the most out of life with their money, be sure to visit us at www.rootfinancialpartners.com.